Well, good morning, everybody. It's Barb Katie again. I hope you're having a wonderful start uh, to Labor Day, and I hope you're taking some special time for yourself on this uh, day that appreciates all the hard work that so many do for all of us each and every day, all year round. Um, here in West Virginia, we owe uh, so much to so many people, and I'm sure it's exactly the same way with you. Uh, if you listed the people that worked to make your life better, it would go on and on forever. And it's always important to appreciate and show gratitude to those in your life who empower your journey through your life uh, to make it as happy and productive as it possibly can be. And interestingly enough, that includes yourself because you play a role in your life as well. Uh, sometimes uh, we have ideals uh, about how our lives are going to evolve that don't always match the reality of the journeys we find ourselves on. But it's important still to look at those ideals and see just how close to reality they actually are, and to find techniques uh, that we can sustain uh, through time in whatever endeavor we're undertaking. A lot of us uh, work on weight management for a variety of different uh, reasons, and it's important to find sustainable techniques, behaviors, and processes uh, to achieve and maintain a weight that's right for your body, uh, not for somebody else. Uh, learning how to manage your weight is a key strategy also for staying fit and lowering our risks of developing certain health conditions. Uh, right now in the United States, one in three adults uh, are living with obesity or overweight, and 17% of our children are, are likewise affected. And these conditions have been linked, as all of us know, to increased likelihood of a, developing heart diseases, diabetes, and uh, fatty liver diseases, among other things. Uh, whether you need to lose, gain, or maintain your weight isn't always easy. Big surprise, right? But there are several strategies that we can briefly re, uh, review here as we take a rest uh, from our daily routines uh, that will help us reach our goals more successfully. Um how do you manage your weight? Uh, do, you eat, do you just eat less and move more? Is, is that all it's about? Well, that's part of the equation, y'all. Yeah. Uh, but diet isn't the only thing that dictates our weight. And sometimes when we're building an ideal image of our journey and what we want it to look like, we forget that is the case, that diet isn't the only thing that dictates. There are certain things like genetics that enter into the equation. I can uh, remember one night I was watching, and this tells you how long ago it was, the Johnny Carson's show. And among his guests were two ladies. One was Carol Burnett, who is now up in her 90s. The other one was Raquel Welsh. And Raquel uh, Welsh was backstage in the green room talking with uh, Gil Burnett before they came out to visit with Mr. Carson. And uh, it was really funny because Carol Burnett came out first and uh, she was just sputtering. Uh, and he said, what's wrong? And she said, well, how dare you put me back there in the green room with Raquel Welsh? And he he says, well, what do you mean? What's wrong with that? She's a nice lady. And Carol Burnett said, yes, but she doesn't even have the decency to have a mole. She's perfect. Well, I think a lot of us develop that image, that perfect expectations. But I'll tell you right now, I come from a family whose genetics would never uh, likely produce either a Carol Burnett or 
a Raquel Welch. You know, that's not the heritage of the genes that I received when I was born. Uh, so there are things like also your gut my, uh, microbiomes that they're finding uh, have a lot more to do than we realize with uh, management of uh, stable weight. And their environmental factors, their behavioral factors, and their even societal factors that come into play. Uh, weight uh, regulation is a bit more complex than simply the direct relationship between energy intake and energy expenditure uh, that was really popular back in the 80s. You know, we've come a long way in understanding how things work. The biggest takeaway from it all is to stay patient with yourself and be flexible as you implement your strategies and work with your health care provider and find a support system uh, to help you not only in reaching whatever goals you've set for yourself, but in learning how to sustain uh, the effort through time. Uh, we all know about physical activity, uh, about uh, the various ways that you can increase uh, your aerobic aerobic and anaerobic activities uh, to help you uh, in your journey to reach and maintain a healthy weight and to be a healthier individual. Uh, physical activity, aside from keeping you strong and flexible uh, and enduring, uh, can also do things like improve your focus and your mood. Uh, it's just not about the physical body. It's about the mental aspects of your body as well. Uh, eating nutritious food. How, how often has this been said to us? And yet, do we always do it? No, we don't. We're not perfect. That's the reason there are ups and downs in the journey. Uh, but to work at finding a plan of eating that you enjoy and will continue through your life uh, is really important and uh, helpful in the long run uh, in every aspect. Uh, eating nutritious food does things like keep you satiated, keeps you satisfied with what you're eating so you're not really is prone to uh, hunger attacks that in fact may not be actual physical hunger, but may be a craving for something deficient in your diet or something you have learned through time is used as a coper for something else. It can also help reducing inflammation in your body, uh, especially trying to eliminate a lot of the refined and ultra processed foods and drinks is very important to keep us as healthy as we possibly can. And that's what this weight management journey is all about, is being able to live at our longest, most healthy, active lives. Uh, food is a good starting point, but it is not the end all, where all, be all of the journey. Uh, think about portion control. Uh, absolutely, portion control is very important. Uh, one of the most uh, enlightening things I ever experienced, I think, was the opportunity to uh, do retreats uh, with uh the tops men uh, when we used to have special retreats for men only and for ladies only. And the guys would be given the measuring cups to measure out the food. And that was not something most of the guys were used to. And when they actually made measured out what an actual portion size and put it on their plate looked like, they were shocked it was sort of like Peggy Lee's song. Is that all there is? You know, it's like, where's the rest of my meal? This is like an appetizer. Uh, it's and like the portion plate, you know, the portion plate is designed to place food in the different areas level 
not piled up to the sky as high as you can possibly get it. Uh, so portion control plays a real and important part uh, just in uh, everyday eating. And it's one of the easiest things to underestimate or overestimate. Uh, I have three sons and they were pretty big guys. Uh, you know, they, uh, all my sons are over six feet tall. So they needed a little bit more fuel uh, just to maintain uh, a body as big as their bodies genetically were. You know, my dad was a tall man. Uh, my brother was a tall man. It, you know, genetically, our family was predisposed to be, uh, the guys were predisposed to be big. And my sons would come home uh, from dinner with one of their girlfriend's families and immediately hit my refrigerator. And I would invariably say to them, what are you doing? You just went to dinner with so-and-so. And they would just look at me and they would say, I hate small food. Well, they were used to eating in our family, which accommodated their size, as opposed to their girlfriend's family, who very often uh, was a girl that was around five foot two and maybe weighed 120 pounds. Her physical needs and the physical needs of most of the members of her family were much less than the physical requirements of a house that had uh, mainly men who were over six feet tall that did fairly heavy physical labor. Uh, it made a difference. You So, you know, portion size is really important when you're trying to look at managing your food as well. Uh, the right amount of food on your plate uh, is something that a registered dietitian uh, can certainly help you with if you're struggling. Uh, you know, basically, uh, you divide your plate into quarters and fill uh, half of your plate with fruits and vegetables, a quarter with carbs, uh, and the final quarter with some type of lean protein that you might be choosing. And then there's the uh, tip that all of us learn, drink more water. And yes, you can debate it till the cows come home and that's fine. Can you substitute? Is it just as good? Uh, you know, what does it actually mean to uh, replace the food that, uh, or to replace the uh, water that you are using each and every day, especially in weather like this where it's so hot? Uh, drinking water can actually support a weight maintenance journey because it helps, believe it or not, to boost your metabolism. It is facilitating for doing uh, some type of activity, increasing the activity level. It aids in digestion. It aids in curbing appetite. And it's also calorie free if you just limit yourself to water. And it doesn't have a lot of additives in it. Uh, you know, it's hard to find absolutely, totally pure spring water that has not been treated uh, if you're uh, drinking from the tap. But a lot of people I know drink a lot of bottled water. Um, hitting your hydration goals, especially in this heat, uh, is a bit of a challenge, but it's something important as you move through your day when you're working at general, overall, good health. Uh if you are one of these people that carry around a reusable water bottle, good for you, because that reminds you to keep drinking water and keep your system well hydrated. Uh, another thing that we know we can do, and this is today is just a general over, overview of things we already know, but we always need to remind ourselves of as we move forward. Avoid late meals. Eating late, late at night, studies have shown, uh, especially right before bedtime, uh, is not the best time of the day uh, to 
be choosing to eat a meal. And when I say late at night, that depends on your lifestyle because some of us work shift work uh, where our Hours are divided up the same, but occur at different times of the day. Uh, one of the things that affects you if you tend to eat right before your rest period is uh, the reduced ener energy expenditures that you have during that rest period. Uh, if you're going by the clock, uh, your circadian uh rhythm can be misaligned. Your sleep cycle falls out of rhythm. You don't know whether you should be awake or asleep. Uh, those of us that travel a good bit from coast to coast often experience that in the form of jet lag. We don't know if we should still be up, if we should go to bed. Exactly. Should we be eating a meal now? Should we not? Because we're clock bound rather than being sensitive to the sun's messages uh, that are being sent to us. Um, some of some people have said actually uh, that things like uh, intermittent fasting uh, is something they like to uh, consider. And actually, to a degree, most of us are engaged in some type of intermittent fasting uh, where you are alternating between periods of eating and periods of not eating. Uh, and this can be, uh, studies have shown, to a degree impactful on our weight maintenance journey. Uh, it One of the things uh, that they talk about is are the different kinds of fasting that you might consider. Uh, I know some people have uh, tried with success fasting all day, once a week or so. Uh, if that works for you in your journey, uh, it doesn't seem to be harmful. Um, give it a try, it, especially sometimes if you're stuck on a plateau. I don't necessarily recommend that, but uh, it is definitely possible. Uh, what most of us are engaged in is time-restricted feeding, that type of intermittent fasting, where you eat whatever food you're going to eat for the day during a period of time. You know, uh, for a lot of people, it, the window is eight to 10 hours. Uh, you know, get up, you eat breakfast at 7 a.m., uh, maybe 7.30. You eat lunch at midday. Uh, you may have a snack or two throughout the day. And around five o'clock, you have your last meal of the day. So you've eaten within that particular period. There's nothing you're choosing to eat before or after. So you have a time-restricted type of fasting going on. Again, if that's something that you find useful, talk to your uh, healthcare professional about it and uh, see if that's something uh, you could try that wouldn't have a negative effect on your health. Um, another thing, Really and truly, and isn't it interesting, this has nothing to do at all with uh, food itself, is uh, learning how to better manage your stress is one thing we can do uh, to really help us. Uh, there's several uh, risk factors for underlying health conditions, including obesity, uh, that stress seems to have an impact on. Uh, for one thing, excessive stress can cause certain hormonal changes. It can stimulate food cravings and changes to your thinking and decision-making abilities. Uh, I'm sure some of you out there are like me and uh, have found that you crave chocolate uh, for some reason when you're under high-stress situations. Uh, you have to look at actually what is going on and consider 
what other strategies you might to be able to employ uh, when you are uh, trying to find other ways besides eating something particular uh, to manage your stress levels? Uh, it has to be something you're willing to do that's easily available is the big suggestion for me when you're searching. Because usually if your stretch is high, you're wanting to reduce it rather quickly. You're not going to want to go through a very involved process to lower that stress. That can even be just stressful in and of itself. Another thing, uh, again, that is you think doesn't have a thing to do with weight management, but actually does, is keeping a regular sleep schedule. Are you really getting enough sleep, enough rest? Uh, I have a good friend right now that uh, bought a new mattress, and it was not a good fit <laughs> in terms of her rest. It just does not support her body the way she needs it and her sleep schedule was totally disrupted and it had major impact on her ability for her body to recover recover and even uh to reduce stress levels through sleep and to aid in her digestion uh, buying a new mattress where she is actually getting a um, more appropriate amount of rest has actually been most helpful to her in moving forward in her journey. Uh, sleep, de sleep deprivation uh, can raise your risk of health concerns like obesity, uh, high blood pressure, and it can often lead to a level of depressions. So with all these in mind, obesity control is not simple. We all know that. We all know we need support. We all know we need patience. We all know we need flexibility because it's not a straight line, which is what we'd all, I think, like to have it be uh, as the little cartoon shows. But it's a series of ups and downs and obstacles to overcome as we go along with a positive attitude. Uh, weight management is one important aspect of healthy living as it can lower our risk of developing certain health conditions and just generally improve our overall quality of life. Uh, staying physically active, eating nutritious foods and managing stress, getting enough rest are all basic principles of living our best and healthiest and happiest lives each and every day. Uh, it, sticking to the program that you have for yourself isn't always easy. It can be a little difficult at times. So that's why we say involve your loved ones, involve your family, involve your friends, involve people who care about you as a human being. Talk with your health care team. They have learn things that can help you manage your journey. Uh, get support. Don't be afraid to ask. And above all, celebrate your milestones and learn from the detours that arise and the bumps in the road and the obstacles that you have overcome. One of the biggest things we can do is to to keep in mind the positive progress we are making in this journey of living our very best lives. So today, think about one thing that you can positively say has made an impact in a successful, healthy living journey for you. I can think of a bunch right off the top of my head right now, and I'm going to go do one of them right now, which is go up to the park and take a walk. It's not too hot out right now, and I'm going to enjoy the view. Have a good one, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.